Naxxramas is one of the most epic and iconic raids in all of World of Warcraft. Unfortunately for us, this is our second time around, and this is going to be a much easier version of the raid. But we still get some amazing loot, it's going to be extremely fun, and there's going to be some cool, unique, and innovative strategies, especially employed tomorrow in the Race of World First, but really throughout this phase as we deal with this raid and find better ways to basically beat every boss. So with that being said, today I'm going to give you a quick tip for every boss that pretty much is gonna just help you down every boss and kind of do it better than you probably were doing it before, or they might be some easy tips that you know already. So from there, let's just dive right in. Starting off with Patchwork. This is easily the hardest boss in the entire raid, actually. My biggest tip for you guys is just to not underestimate this boss. If you are a melee DPS, give your tanks enough time to have enough threat or else you will get one shot. This is pretty much no matter what gonna happen in most raids, but if you have all of your tanks in extremely tanky gear and you allow them time to have a threat lead, you won't have any issues. Just don't underestimate how hard he hits with the hatefuls as well as how hard he hits the main tank. Just relax and you'll down it in one shot. Next up is Grobulus. Now, whenever Grobulus puts the debuff on anyone in your raid, just have them run out away from the direction of whichever way you are kiting the boss. Most guilds will probably kite this boss clockwise. So have whoever has the debuff just pretty much run to the left or run counterclockwise and behind the raid group. But the only fear is somebody might just use decursive or whatever they're using and instantly dispel the debuff right in the melee group and it'll just kill the rest of the raid. If you don't use a dispeller, you can just run out as the debuff is about to drop. This is actually easier and safer to do most likely, so just run out from the boss and then from there don't stand in front of the boss. Easy clap. Next is Gluth. The easiest way to deal with this boss is to have a hunter and a mage or just two hunters dropping frost traps as you can see on the left of the screen right behind Prefox. And those frost traps will slow the little zombies as they move towards the boss. And then you'll just have whatever tank is kiting them around in a circle. Make sure that your hunters actually also trank shot the boss whenever he enrages. And from there, it's very simple. Moving on into Thaddeus, the hardest part about this boss is just not feeling the jump like a fool. Realistically, this is probably the hardest part of this boss, either not feeling the jump or making sure that you've designated which sides you are moving to have your debuffs. So if positives are right and negatives are left, make sure that you have everybody doing that. If not, you will wipe the raid or you will hurt yourself. And from there, make sure you use Bloodlust after you get your debuffs up so everybody has extra damage on the boss. Into the spider wing on Anubricon, the first boss, you can just cleave down the adds. You don't have to worry about focusing them. And if the boss actually does reach the phase where he casts Locust Swarm, then you just want to get away and actually have your range finish killing the boss. If any melee stay within range after he casts it, you won't be able to literally use any of your buttons. So just run away. Way. Death Knights can actually anti-magic shell the onset of this, but they still do need to run away before AMS runs out or they'll just be useless. For Feralina, you can pretty much stack and cleave down almost all of the adds. Although to be safe, you might want to MC some of the worshippers and use their explode or their silence so that the boss gets silenced for 30 seconds. If the boss does enrage, just use a tank CD and you shouldn't actually have to worry too much. If you're struggling at all, just tank some of the adds away from the boss, keep it alive, and then mind control them whenever the boss is about to enrage. My ex can be sneakily challenging. Every now and then it will do a web spray and DBM or the Thames pack will just give you a warning when it's happening. You all will be stunned and my Exen will still be wailing on the tank. Just make sure you have some hots on the tank as well as rotating raid cooldowns so that the tank doesn't die while it has zero mitigation. You cannot bubble this effect, although you can actually still vanish it if you are a skilled rogue. From there, the boss will actually enrage later on in the phase. So if you're struggling at all, you might wanna save your actual bloodlust until about 35% so you can burn it down before you actually have it enraged and stunning the tank and just kind of killing it. Resuvius can be the next challenging boss, but it's actually easy if you think about it. The boss is tauntable, so watch out for that. I would suggest your priests actually use the glyph of mind control to make it easier for them to MC this boss. And the real tip is to make sure that your priests that are using the MCs are actually communicating with the rest of the raid. If their taunt is gonna fall off, if their MC is gonna fall off, just make sure that a tank taunts the boss or a second priest taunts it with another one of the understudies. But if things get a little bit scary, know that this boss is fully tauntable and you can just have people like your DPS 
run away from the boss and taunt him all the way around the room. You can pretty much just chain taunt him and kite him around the room so that nobody dies. This has happened to me on the beta where we've lost all of the understudies and people started dying and we just used three death knights and a hunter to just taunt this boss all around in a circle. It is an easy way to save yourself if things go wrong. For Gothic, you can do a few different strategies. You can split up your raid or have them all be on one side. If your entire raid for the most part is on the live side, then eventually the gates will open and all of the undead will filter all the way to you. When they do do this, just use a D sack and have your paladin AOE stun and you can burn down all of the ads. But there is a cheeky thing you can do and I no longer have a VOD of it, although I used to have a clip where you can jump through the gate and move on towards the four horsemen. If you have a hunter puller pulling all the way towards four horsemen and bringing ads back to you and then you're just healing him with prayer of mending or buffing him with things like kings then the ads will move through the gate and you can clear all of the trash during this encounter it's a little bit more intimidating and it is something that more people will do in speed runs than in normal runs but then you don't have to deal with any of the trash after this boss and moving into four horsemen for the four horsemen encounter not even in full pre-raid base you can stack all three of the ads on the left side and just have a paladin tank the last ad in the far back right corner. Now, this means you're stacking on top of Lady Blue Mao. The two horsemen in the back don't actually move, but the two in the front completely do. You will bloodlust and burn down Lady Blue Mao and then kill Baron Rivendir or Thane Cortez, whichever your raid lead chooses. I would usually choose to kill Thane next. The only things to worry about in this strategy are if you get more than four stacks on yourself of both Thane and Baron Rivendir's actual debuff, then you're gonna start taking quite a bit of damage. Just just rotate raid cooldowns and your own defensives when you get that high. Once they're all dead, then you can move on to Sir Zaliac. Just make sure not to chain lightning and kill your entire raid like you just saw in the background as you move into Zaliac. Just send a little bit of the melee and make sure everybody else spreads out. Don't run directly towards this boss or you'll kill everybody. You might be wondering how you're actually tanking Zaliac at this time during the first phase or when you're burning down the other three ads. Well, in the background, you can see Rugs is just showing a good placement for a healer to come and stand and just literally heal themselves while you kill the other ads. Also, you can use a paladin healer here where they put their beacon up on the tank for the other bosses and just heal themselves while they're still healing the tanks. Noth is a super easy fight. All you need to worry about is making sure everybody gets decursed, and then when the boss actually blinks away, it is an aggro drop. I believe he's tauntable though, but just watch out so you don't die when he blinks away. Whenever he does that, let your tank pick up the boss and then go back to killing him. Deal with the adds by cleaving them down. You don't need to focus them whatsoever. Hygen is really straightforward. Just make sure you're following your tanks when you're doing the Hygen dance and you'll have no issues. What's actually more intimidating is this room after Hygen where there's a bunch of ads as you run towards Lotheb. Make sure your guild decides to either interrupt and kill these ads or to have everyone just run past. Because if you have some people lingering behind, they will die to these eye stalks. So make sure you move as a group and go all the way through or else the person is gonna have to release and you'll have to summon them and it's just a huge waste of time. For Lotheb, make sure your guild has designated who's getting what spores when, or if not, don't be the people that run out and burn a spore before actually anyone else gets there because the spores die and five people around them get this amazing buff where they pretty much just can crit forever for the next minute. If you are the person that sprints out to the spore and kills it by yourself all the way out in a corner, you are hard griefing your entire raid. These spores are not grippable and they move very slowly. What I would suggest is actually just waiting for them to get close to the raid because by the time they're actually within range of the raid itself, you can just turn around and kill it with melees and you will all get the buff. You don't need to have downtime moving to these spores because if you are the person that just runs out to one of these spores by themselves and burns it down and is the only person getting this crit buff then everybody in your tire raid is gonna hate you don't be that guy and you'll be fine. Also, as the boss is about to die, feel free to leave some of the spores up because you can kill them after the boss dies and bring that buff into the next pack or into Saffron, whichever you're dealing with next. You do not need frost resistance for the Saffron fight. It is really easy. The only thing that can kill you is the frost bomb. And the thing about the frost bomb is, as you can see in this little corner right here, as I'm circling it, if there is an ice tomb close enough to the boss, then you can actually sometimes still auto attack the boss from behind the ice tomb. If you are in this position, if you are behind the ice tomb close enough to the boss, make sure you are not auto attacking just as you saw in the background because it does not count as LOS 
if you auto attack through it. Make sure you're behind there and just press escape. For KT phase one, it's pretty much just a time gated slow phase. Have your tanks pick up the A bombs. You don't need to run out to them. They will slowly make it to the center of this circle. And also don't send your pets into the little skeletons, the soldiers of frozen waste. Your pets will actually trigger this AOE damage that will hit the entire raid with a ton of damage. So don't do that. Also don't AOE an entire corner. You can kill it. It won't actually wipe the raid, but it can get a little sketchy and people can die. It's just not worth it. On the actual boss himself, make sure that your melee are all spread out and actually all of your entire group is spread out because there's two things that are going to hit you with AOE. You're going to have the ice tombs that hit everybody within a range. So if your melee are stacked too closely, you're going to get every single person ice tombed and you will wipe. Also, when the boss does do its mind control, make sure you prioritize your hard CC on your melee. You can see right here, if you don't use hard CC, something like a cyclone, then you will actually see a lot of your melee just cleaving down everyone who gets MC'd and they will die. From there, just have your tank pick up the adds when they do spawn and use your bloodlust or heroism when they do spawn, have them picked up and bring down the boss and collect your loot, guys. Congratulations, you have now cleared next Ramus 25 man in Wrath of the Lich King. That was that easy. That's one tip or just kind of the general tips for every single boss in this raid. Thanks for watching guys and I'll have a min max guide for your frost and unholy DK to get your 99s on every boss as well as hunter and rogue coming out soon. If there's any important mechanics I missed let me know in the comments and lastly new channel memberships guide coming soon and thank you guys so much for 35,000 subscribers. We did it! Now we're on our way to 50k! Alright guys, good luck out there, collect your loot, and I'll see you all on the next one.